Good old mama's boy, James E. Cornette. You gotta give Jim Cornette this. Above anything else, the man knows how to stir people up. And I can respect that, at least, if nothing else. The man knows how to elicit reactions out of people. He knows how to continue to preserve some type of shelf life of relevancy when, frankly, that should have long since expired. Should have long since expired. Jim Cornette is Jim Cornette. He does not apologize for it. And sometimes he will say, a lot of times he will say, things that a lot of people will not agree with. So it doesn't surprise me, even though it made me laugh a little bit, when I saw recently that somebody wrote an article, I think it was for Fansite or DDT, whatever the hell, one of these Markish websites by one of these idiot marks, talking about it was time to cancel Jim Cornette. It's <laughs> like, that's the answer for everything now, isn't it? We're going to cancel them. You know, there's a problem with that cancel culture in our society as a whole. Nobody's allowed to be imperfect anymore, even though everybody is. Nobody can make a mistake anymore, even though everybody does, and a lot of them. Now, certainly, certain mistakes are far more severe in their gravity and scope than others are. But part of what we know as being human is that we are imperfect creatures by nature, and as a result, we are going to screw up, we are going to F up, we are going to make mistakes. And a lot of times what defines us as human beings, as people, ultimately, is what we do with those mistakes. How do we take them and incorporate them into our lives and potentially turn them into learning opportunities where we can grow and improve? But instead, now we've got this culture that if anybody says anything wrong, does anything wrong, they're afraid that that one mistake is potentially going to impact and ruin their whole damn lives. That's not a healthy environment for growth. That's not a healthy environment for improvement. That is not a healthy environment that we all feed into nowadays for us becoming better as a people, as a society. It's just not. Now, if you want to sit there and say, I want to cancel O.J. Simpson. Okay, you can miss out on his fantasy football talk on Twitter if you must. If you want to cancel R. Kelly, I think you have plenty of reason at this point to do so. That's not mistakes. That's enablement of really, really bad, bad behavior for decades. He has a track record. He has a history. He has enough to reasonably say, black. He's canceled. But you see it so often. An actor or an athlete or this person or that person does this one thing or says this one thing and you gotta cancel them no matter what! It's just so stupid and so counterproductive to our society. The world is an incredibly gray place. There's all types of gray and white space where things aren't so clearly defined. Not everything is just going to truly be black and white. But so often with our politics, religious views, so on and so forth, you either got to be this or you got to be that. There absolutely is no in-between. Where in the vast majority of cases, there is a whole hell of a lot of in-between and the reality lies somewhere in that nebulous. But as far as Jim Cornette goes, should he be canceled? Yeah, here's the thing. His cornet at times says some ignorant shit. He just does. The stuff he said recently about Sonny Kiss, that's ignorant. You know, there's been accusations throughout the years that he has some racist tendencies, and sometimes some of the things you hear him say would most certainly make you believe that could be the case. Now, in and of itself, any one of those things doesn't automatically mean that a person should be canceled forever. But if it becomes a trend, it becomes a pattern of behavior, then at some point in time, it is fair to ask the question and fair to propose it. But here's, here's what I will say. Here's what I will say. And this is not so much in the defense of Jim Cornette. 
Because in the grand scheme of things, yes, he was a great manager back in the day, but realistically, his best times were 30 freaking years ago. That's the truth. He might have a lot of understanding of history and knowledge of the wrestling business, and some of the things he knows about and some of the things he talks about are still important to today's wrestling, and we need more of those elements. But it is also clearly obvious that in some ways, the wrestling business and society as a whole has passed him by. And it is also very fair to say with Jim Cornette that as much as he likes to crap on a Bischoff, or in particular Vince Russo, when was the last time you heard Jim Cornette ever take responsibility for anything that he's ever done wrong or anything he's been a part of that's ever been screwed up? You know, going back to his time with Creative and TNA or going to his time running the show in ROH, it's always everybody else's fault. It's brute. It's fucking Vince Russo. It's this guy. It's that guy. But it's never good old Jim Cornette's fault for any damn thing. So, you know, how seriously can you really take him? But in the grand scheme of things, when we talk about wrestling, you can either get a good reaction, a bad reaction, or worst of all, get no reaction. I've been talking about for a few years now how the WWE has been in the reaction business. And as a byproduct, wrestling as a whole now is in the reaction business. They don't care about good guys and bad guys, faces and heels, villains and heroes. They don't care about that stuff. Just give them a reaction, good or bad. At least they can sell something about that. The crowd is engaged to some level. But it's like I always talked about with the if you're going to sit there and do that John Cena walkout as soon as this match has come, you turn around and you leave. That's still a reaction. And you already paid your money to get into the show. That's stupid. You're still feeding the WWE machine. You're still giving them your money. And you still, as a byproduct, are giving them a reaction of some kind. If you want Jim Cornette to go away... If you want Jim Cornette to be canceled, here is a novel concept. Ignore his ass and don't react to him. Over all the years of doing this on YouTube and social media and everything else, and just in my life in general, I've learned the importance of ignoring things. Don't feed into it. You know the whole thing of don't feed the trolls? People sit there and talk about it, and then they'll feed the trolls like crazy. Jim Cornette is a high-class wrestling troll. And by always reacting to him and getting your panties all into a wad about him, you are feeding into exactly what he wants and continuing to extend his shelf life or relevancy way past what it should maybe have been. You're getting worked. That doesn't mean it's okay for Jim Cornette to say homophobic or transphobic or racist or sexist stuff. No, it's not okay to do that. But calling somebody butterface is not sexist either. Stupid. Everybody's so damn sensitive nowadays. Like Christ Almighty. When I hear people complaining about how politically correct everything is, I'm like, you know what? To a degree, that is true. Complaining about political correctness does not mean it's okay for you to be racist or overtly sexist. But there has to be a little bit of thickening of skin on this generation, future generations, and frankly, the older generations too. You got conservatives calling liberals fucking snowflakes, and all the while, while these guys are snowflaking, these ones are snowflaking just as much. If what Jim Cornette says bothers you so much, ignore it and ignore him. It's like every time you see an announcement that there's going to be a KKK rally in your town or in your city or in a nearby town or city, a group like the KKK, a fear-mongering hate speech group like the KKK with their racist and anti-Semitic views, Live for one thing, and that is a tension. 
If you ignore them, they kind of wither and die. But instead of being logical and saying, hey, these idiots that live solely for this attention and this exposure, we'll just ignore them and they probably will go away or it won't matter and we just go on with our lives. Instead, people got to get all indignant about it. Like, no, we can't get that happening in our time in our city. We got to rip again and we get a good guy in there. We got to counter protest. And it's just this never ending cycle of bullshit. At what point in time can we just say if you don't like something that somebody says, just ignore it? There's so many other more important things in this world than bitching about it every time. Like there are people that come onto my videos here every single time and will just bitch about me the whole time. I will ignore it because in the grand scheme of things, it doesn't matter. But if I bother people so much, they could just ignore it. But they choose not to, so they feed into it. I'm just choosing not to feed into it back. If you don't like what he says, stop tweeting him. Stop replying to him. Stop sitting there and doing videos talking about Cantor Dean Cornette or he's an idiot or this or that. Because clearly he's onto something if he can elicit that level of reaction out of all of you. It's got to be something, right? I mean, this is like this whole thing of if I go up to a woman on the street and I said, hey, I like that color on you. That is a nice dress. If she is offended by that, that's on her ass. If I go up to same woman in said dress and say, God, I sure would like to look up that skirt and then I want to mourn about those titties. Just because I might want to say that or might even think that, does not in any way, shape, or form make it okay for me to actually say that. And if she has a problem with that, that is on me. But this is not that serious. This is not that big of a deal in the grand scheme of things. It is different as opposed to me going up to a woman in person and saying some stuff like that. If you don't like what Jim Cornette says via social media or via his podcast, don't follow him on Twitter. Don't reply to him on Twitter. Don't listen to his damn podcast. Because good or bad, at this stage of his career, the number one thing he is living for is a reaction, and he's getting that, and he's working all of you in the process. If you want him to go away, ignore his ass. Ignore his ass. No, it doesn't make it okay for some of the shit that he says. But to sit there and get all mamby-pamby wound up about this every freaking time. Somebody says something that is off-color, off-the-cuff, or bordering into other territories. Just how, do, how do people survive in their day-to-day -day lives? There have to be things that are more important than what this guy in professional wrestling, or excuse me, the performance art world, fucking says. If you don't like the fact that he's calling out your spot monkey fuckboy favorites, then don't listen to him. Don't respond to him. Don't give him the oxygen that he needs to survive. Otherwise, if you're going to continue to respond to him, and you can continue to feed into it. Shut up about it! It's like you're willingly being trolled at this point. Can't you this and can't you that? Instead of just flat out doing cancel, just ignore him. Like, that's the biggest thing of all. What happened to it being okay if you didn't agree with something or didn't like something? You just didn't fucks with it! If I don't like a type of TV show or if I don't like a certain movie and I don't want to watch it, guess what I do? I don't watch it! <sighs> Cancel Jim Cornette if you want, but it's stupid. Just ignore him. He might not go away, but in the grand scheme of things, maybe you'll be much, much happier when you're not worried about him anymore. Is that too much to ask? 